I'm ready. All right. Kick ass and take names. Yeah. Here, here we, here we go. Live from Toronto, it's episode 216 of Hebsy on Sports. I'm your host, Mark Hebsher, along with Toronto Mike, and we've got a jam-packed show for you today. Uh, the end of an era in sports broadcasting. Jay and Dan are being split up. <laughs> Jay moving Same. to breakfast. T- oh, sorry. Uh, Dan is going to... Oh, I got the wrong duo. Sorry. I, I was thinking of two white guys on national television. Oh, Hebsy and, and Taddy. We're thinking and of Hebsy and Taddy guy. there. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Tim and Sid are breaking up. Sid's moving to breakfast television. Are you shocked? Are you gutted? Did you think this was going to happen? Did you have a feeling, an inkling, that the Tim and Sid show on radio versus on television? Is it a is it a television show with that they they made a radio show out of? Is it a radio show for TV? Anyway, uh, we're going to get into that a big time. That's a big big story. That's a that's a bombshell. That's a people were like freaked out. Eulogies. For Sid Six Arrow. And he's not even dead yet. <laughs> he's not even leaving the show yet, for gosh sake. Or right, the company. Get into that. Um, uh, you know what? I'm a bit concerned about reporters who get scooped by nobodies and then turn around and post stories about shit that never happened. I don't like that. That's not journalism, okay? Mm. No apologies, no nothing. Nothing. I'm intrigued. Hazel May had us going there for a while. But ultimately, her source burned her. We're going to talk about basic journalism, making sure you get the story right rather than getting it first, and just how different it is nowadays to be a quote-unquote beat reporter or insider compared to back in the day. There's not as much work required. It's just you have too many things available to you, and it's, it's, things can go sideways really quickly. And then the public loses trust in you, and you can't have that. Uh, also, let's not forget the Blue Jays got George Springer and Kirby Yates. I feel bad for Kirby Yates. The guy's a hell of a pitcher, and he's dying to come here. But, I mean, you heard like three words from the guy because everything else, you know, right. even Springer, if the Springer story should have been huge. Should have been massive. Instead, the story ended up being how people screwed up not getting the story. Couldn't get the story right. Hmm. I'm dying to see George. I'm dying to find out where George Springer. When do we get to see this guy in a Jays uniform? Where, in Dunedin? On a Zoom call from his home, I have no idea. And and you know what? Don't even get me started on Michael Brantley. We'll talk about that. You know, for a second there, I thought murderers row. Right. Murderers row, one through nine. <laughs> but no. The Leafs and Raptors, both in action tonight. The, and neither in action tomorrow night. So, again, a Saturday night with the, what do I do? What, what, what? It's Saturday. <laughs> and these days seem to run into each other, don't they? Is it Thursday? Is it Saturday? Is it Monday? When the Jays are playing when? Monday? Is it training start? What time of the year is it? Duh. <laughs> Uh, so both teams in action tonight. The NFL playoffs down to the final four. Let's go, Buffalo. Mike, you know, I went four for four last weekend. Eh? Oh, good for you. I, I got a ball with the spread. Yes. Uh, oh, again, with, that's it, tough. That's tough. Yeah, yeah. I hope the Bills win this weekend. Doesn't look like we're going to have the Olympics in Tokyo this summer, although the Canadian Olympic Committee seems to think everything is going to be okay. Mm. The Canadian Olympic Committee with blinders on. Everybody else in the world is like, it's not going to happen. 80% of Japanese say, we don't want the Olympics in July. It's not going to happen. And here the Canadian Olympic Committee is, oh, we're still working towards Canada, you know, being on the podium. Jeez, wake up. Where you been? (laughs) Um, Lots of postponements in the NHL and NBA. COVID still very much a part of our lives. Anyway, let's say hi to uh, Toronto Mike. Busy week. Yeah, one for the ages, Hebsey. Uh, no big, kidding. big news all over the place in sports and elsewhere. Some, you know, it was quite the week. Yeah, um, let's let's start with this. Um, let's start with the announcement yesterday because I don't know if you're aware, folks who listen to the podcast, but Tim and Sid, Tim McAuliffe and Sid Sixero, very successful duo. Probably, I'm going to say for the last 15 years, Mike. 20 years okay they were on this they were on the score first right so they were a duo on the score before they come over to 590 yeah, which was probably, t- probably about a podcast 10 years score. ago they came over to uh 590 right. but anyway so they've been on for a long time um the thing is is that they've been all over the place this is one of the problems when i worked at sports line at global the show was on at 11 30 every night 11 30 set your clock by it 11 30 11 30 nowadays with podcasts and with time shifting and whatever else they call it, 
um, you, it's possible that you could miss out on some really good programming unless you're aware of how to get this program if you can't see it live. So, so correct me if I'm wrong here now, Mike. Tim and Sid, when they started on radio, on radio, mm -hmm. they were on from one till four. That sounds about right. Yeah. They led into Bob McCallan's show. It was a strong, strong afternoon on the fan. Um, and I mean, for the last number of years, the TSN 1050 couldn't even come close. Not even close. That was a good lineup. Tim right. and Sid, one to four. I think Blair was on from noon, nine to noon, and then they had Baseball Central or Hockey Central or whatever. But anyway, it was a strong lineup, and McCowan had big numbers. And then they decided, you know, let's, let's give Tim and Sid a television show, right? Let's right. give them a television show. Oh, the Scott Moore decision. Yeah, and let's, and let's take that television show, and we'll keep it on radio. No, no, we won't keep it on radio. We're just going to have it on as, as a television show. And we're going to put it up against Bob McCowan's show. So not a lead into McCowan's show. We're going to put it up against McCowan's show for two hours. Now, McCowan at the time goes, wait a second. Like, why would you do this to me? And they said, oh, no, no, it's a different audience. Tim and Sid's audience is different. Like nobody who listens to Tim and Sid would be a Bob McCowan listener. What would they want to know? An interesting interview with, you know, the commissioner of baseball or why would, like, that's just dumb. It was a dumb program. It was stupid. And that what it was it alienated many people at Rogers. Right. And just uh, that at that time, uh, as if they weren't alienated maybe already, but a lot of them were like, whoa, whoa, whoa what are they doing here? Well, a little footnote. Why are they, why are they doing, and Tim and Sid to produce a television show is not cheap. McCowan's show was just the talking head shot, you know, the wide shot of him. Uh, you know, just sitting there and talking like you would on a radio show. Right. But Tim and Sid's show was an interactive, um, well-produced show that cost dough. And so naturally, McCowan was like, well, you know, I, leading in was great. They gave me some numbers or whatever. But so they started screwing around with that. And then they ended up being on this afternoon show from five to seven, I think two hours, right? Yes. For a number of years. Um, and lately, since McCowan was let go, and that show, Primetime Sports, was um, eviscerated. They just stuck in Tim and Sid's TV show on the radio for two hours in the afternoon, five to seven. Am I right? Yeah, so, just, so when they went to TV, it was TV only. That move actually ends up costing us uh, Brunt as a co-host on Primetime That's Sports. That's right, Br Brunt said, screw this. Right, because well, Brunt did Tim and Sid, and I think McCowan got pissed McCowan got, Well, that was part of the McCowan. But the point of the matter is, is that yeah. Rogers, Sportsnet screwed up. Rogers screwed up when they said, when they had a good thing going in the afternoon. And then they moved Tim and Sid to a TV show only. Right. So I think taking them off radio was a mistake. And in fact, I'll tell you this right now, Mike. Sure. I think they should have said to Tim, and here's the weird thing. Sid's going to breakfast television. Got to get up at 3 a.m. If he was that fond of mornings, why wouldn't he have said, why would they have put Tim and Sid on the morning show on the fan? Like when they let Brady go, why wouldn't they say, all right, they're going to try Tim and Sid here. You can have fun in the mornings. It's not serious. You don't have to have, you know, you can get the scores in, but you can have some fun. You can show your personality. You can do stuff. Why wouldn't they have done that instead of trying, you know, any number of different uh, can I ask people you that, that weren't known for doing mornings? Because you're, you're, I mean, if you're going to go with people that had never done mornings, go with two people. Hebsey right? man, you're part of a popular duo that we all we all uh, loved. Now I have a question about something here. Now, do you know Tim and Sid personally? Like, are these guys? Yeah, of course, yeah, I worked with them. They were interns at the, the Headline Sports. Are they buddies? When do you I know? was anchoring evenings with Greg Sansoni. Now, Greg Sansoni, you know, is the one who's making all these calls <clears throat> uh, at Sportsnet. All right. the programming decisions when it comes to personnel. That's are pretty much Greg, you know. Are these he's the head guy? Now. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so these suggestions that McCowan's coming back, I, I don't know about that. I mean, McCowan was, I mean, Greg was an intern for McCowan on radio when he started. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how well he was treated by McCowan, but I can pretty much tell you, I don't think, I, I can't see that dynamic working, <laughs> right? Well, It'd be like calling in your grandfather who taught you everything and said, all right, this is the way it's going to be. Well, Hebsey, man, uh, do, are Tim and Sid friends? Are they buddies? Like, would they hang? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, do they hang out with each other? Yeah, I like, don't think so. Would they hang out outside the uh, booth? Oh yeah, oh for sure. Look, I I saw I ran into them several times. You know, at Maple okay. Leaf Square. At uh, <clears throat> I'm not saying that they always go together, and that's part of a promotional thing. But I think after a number of years, and I went through this with uh, you know a sports line. It wasn't because of Jim. It wasn't because of the building I was in. It's after 10, 11 years, you're burned out. You want to change. 
Um, and people are speculating, is this a sideways move for Sid? But is it an up move for Sid? I mean, he's going from afternoon drive to mornings, blah, blah, blah. Come on. You get to be a certain age. You get to be in the business for a certain amount of time. You see certain things you want to do. And let's face it. Sid would be great on breakfast television because anything they throw at him, he would do. He would try it. Sports or non-sports. Eating, for example. Just eating. <laughs> right? Like, right. hey, Sid, try this. Try this. It just Sid being on the streets. Come on. Sid coming up to you with a camera. <clears throat> you know, it's stuff like that. Anyway, I just, but I don't know why they wouldn't have, they, uh, why they wouldn't have said to Tim and Sid, let's put you on the mornings and you're going to be a, they'd be a dynamite morning duo on sports radio mm. in Toronto. They would. Anyway, do, do you think maybe Sid, Sid wanted to uh, see if he could do something else? Do you think? Maybe, his wings. I'm sure right. Tim did too. I'm sure after a while, someone said to you, okay, guys, you've done this. You, you're successful at it. We don't know how much further you're going to go. We're looking at the radio ratings and they're terrible. They're so bad. They've been overtaken by um, 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 overdrive. Right. They've been, th that afternoon drive show, I mean, I don't know how far you can go back. When McCowan was running a seven share and it was like a 0 0.8 for, you know, 1050. And now 1050 has a 2.6 share in the afternoons, males 25 to 54. And the fan 590 is a 1.9. Wow. So if ever there was a reason to pull that show or change that show or turn it back into primetime sports or whatever you want to call it. Hi, everybody. Tim McAuliffe here with Stephen Brunt right. and the rest of the panel. And we're joined by Donovan Bennett. We're joined by Arash. You know what I mean? You can still do that. And I think Tim, <clears throat> excuse me, I think Tim, at least I would, would like to branch out too and do maybe more serious interviews that don't require a cutesy little, you know, bah, 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 with sound effects and stuff like that. <laughs> right. I could be wrong, but I think after a while, you may want to grow your show, right? Did you watch, per, did you ever sit down and watch the Tim and Sid show? Was this a TV yeah. show oh, you would yeah. watch? Okay. Okay. It's a TV show. I couldn't listen to it though. I had problems listening to that show on radio. Because it's a uh, TV right? first. It's, it's hard not to make a reference to something. <laughs> right. Uh, visually when you're doing a TV show, right? When you know the cameras are watching you and you're playing more to the camera, you're watching your monitor to see what, you know, what the feed is. But on, uh, on overdrive or when McCown was on radio, they never you know, had nothing to do with it. You're, you're listening to it. So do you have a prediction as to uh, the future of the uh, show formerly known as Tim and Sid? Yeah, I think what they're going to do is they're going to, try a whole bunch of stuff and see what works. They don't really have a plan. Mm. Like if it was TSN, they would have a plan. But I think the program director at the fan is out. He's gone, man. He's out. Is that Cadeau? Dave Cadeau? Yeah, Dave Cadeau. He's out. Because mm. you know, Dave Cadeau would have never, I don't think he would have, I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say, I don't, I don't know the man. Um, but I just think that when you look at what the fans lineup looked like and and what it looks like now and right. big question mark, you know, the, it all starts with the mornings. I think if someone would have had the foresight to say, look, instead of giving Tim and Sid a TV show, let's, let's, let's put them on mornings. Let's see how it goes on mornings. They're a proven duo, right? What's the difference? What time, if it's mornings and they're having some fun, I mean, isn't mornings the time to have fun on a sports station? Like right. why, who wakes up and listens to a sports station except for the scores from the night before? Right. But come on. Have some fun. Hey, I watched the Leaf game last night. You see that? Blah, 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 blah. You know, I just see that commercial. Did you see when so and so? Come on. Anyway. Anyway, enough with that. Now, um, I have to talk about um, this George Springer story. Yes. I kind of want to put it in context uh, as to how this all came about and, and uh, how reporters nowadays do not have the time to craft their story. In fact, they're not reporters in the true sense of the word. Once they get the scoop, they don't have to write a story. They only got to throw 15 or 20 words out there or a maximum of what, 280, right? Right. And you can't. You can't sit there, and this isn't on deadline. This is you better get it on Twitter before they get it on Twitter. Just this, this race to see who gets it first. Right. Which in the end means nothing because no one, 10 years from now, nobody's going to go, hey, remember the name of that guy that got the scoop on the George Springer story? No one's going to remember. They're not. They're going to remember Springer leading the Jays to two consecutive world championships. Woo! 
They're not going to go. They're not. They're just not. And so at the time, it's a big deal because this scoop thing. Now, it, it, it wasn't that many years ago when if you had a newspaper, a story for a newspaper, you had to sit on that story. You had to wait until the newspaper was published, right, for your story to get out there. Um, and you'd be sitting on spill because you'd be worried that, oh, my God, I hope I don't get scooped. I hope somebody at the other newspaper doesn't have this story. But now that's a whole, that goes out the window. Reporters don't have time to craft their story now, and some of them aren't reporters per se. They're, they're, they're just taking a piece of information and tweeting it out. And so there's no context. You've got to have context. And that's why, you know, we miss That's why a long form interview gives you context versus right. a clip. Right. That you have to set up, you have to put into perspective, this is what happened. He had been asked eight questions in a row, and then he exploded on this reporter. You see, even that Jakob Voracek thing, you needed to give context. You needed to have a background. What was his background with that reporter that he called him a piece of shit? Like, what? like you know what? But people made a big deal of context. So when someone tweets out, um, Springer, George Springer signs with Jay's uh, pending physical done deal. And it comes out from somebody you've never heard of before. Right. Well, naturally you're going to go, well, what's all this about? Who is this guy? And then you see someone else maybe, and they're tweeting out, have just confirmed George Springer signs deal with Jay's pending physical. Right. And you say, whoa, that's two people independent of each other. Right. And where and so now you go to you go to Shai Davidi's feed, you go to Hazel May's feed, mm -hmm. you go to Ben Nicholson Smith's feed, you go to Joe Siddle's feed, you go to Jamie Campbell's feed, you go to Arash Madani's feed, you go to I'm missing out on the Blue Jay. Who am I missing out on? Uh -huh. Um Arden's uh -huh. Wellings feed. Yeah. You go to the people that you would go to to get your Blue Jay news. Ken Rosenthal, even though he's not a Blue Jay guy, he's connected. Right. And none of them have this, and now they're all scrambling like crazy and their editors and their news directors are going what the hell and they can't track it down they don't have the source their source doesn't know but they're flipping out because now they don't know who brandon brandon what's his name is they well, have no idea well do you know who he is no i looked him up brandon kuhn he's a blogger he's from british columbia mm-hmm he had uh, contributed uh, to some Jay's sites, you know, um, a couple of good blogs, knows his stuff. And, and naturally people are going, well, how does this guy know? How did he know? Well, that's the thing. He's not going to reveal his source. But he tweeted the story out from his barber's chair. He's sitting in a barber's chair and tweeted the picture of himself out. And so you could, and he's not going to reveal his source. He's, he's not going to tell you. And I guarantee you, you may never hear from this guy again when it comes to breaking a story. He just happened to be in the right place at the right time. He happened to be sitting in the barber's chair. I'm only making this up, but this yeah. is probably what happened. Yeah. He's in the barber's chair in, in Redmond, Washington, or uh, Abbotsford, Iraq, BC, or wherever he was. doesn't matter. Man, that is not where you are okay. physically. And in the same barber shop, he overhears a conversation, or the guy next to him is like, what? You're kidding. We got Springer? Deal's done? Awesome. Okay, buddy, <laughs> click. And now he's sitting in the next chair going, Jay's got George Springer? And the dude goes, yeah, that was my brother-in-law. He's the agent or something like that. Right. Right. You know what this is or like, he Hubsy? Right, or he, not even that. <laughs> but the thing is, now that the guy's sitting there going, well, like, what have I got to lose? I just heard right. literally from the horse's mouth. Right. That Jay's got Springer and no one else knows this. Do, 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 Twitter. Okay. But Hebsy. Okay, what did he have to lose? That's everything, right? Because he had so he had nothing to lose. So if he was wrong, nobody would give a shit because he's just some guy that we I never heard of. But that's, that's right, right? So he can kind of roll the dice on that, like because if it, Correct. you know what I mean? Yeah. So he kind of could be just getting lucky. Like a lot of people thought it might happen, but to say it's a done. No, no, no. Wait a second. Go no, ahead. Mike. I'm sorry. At that time, I don't recall anyone going. The Jays are close to signing George Springer. But we were always I don't recall uh, pursuing anyone in the media Springer. Saying it could happen any day. The Jays are close with Springer. Am I right? Okay, but we all knew he was a target. We didn't think a target, but so right. was everybody else. We just because we and didn't think they'd spend up that, that kind of money guys. because we thought these guys were going to save money for Rogers. <laughs> Whatever the case, Mike, when you found out that the Jays had signed Springer, were you not shocked? Oh yeah, that's I was shocked. shocked. Yeah. Okay. 
Of course. It was a shock. Yeah. It was a huge story. There was no, and then, and then while these other reporters were trying to confirm it, they're, they're posting stuff like, oh man, I'll have to come. Some of the expressions are, uh, we're just ridiculous. Gaining traction. That's it. As if somebody's going to phone you to go, yeah, I just wanted to update you that we're gaining traction on the negotiations. Right. Come on. <laughs> Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Anyway, the story's first reported by a guy named Brandon Kuhn mm -hmm. and then Joey Vendetta, right. uh, who's, um, not exactly a reporter known for his scoops, but a well-connected guy nonetheless. Sure. Uh, Joey tweets it out as well. But still, people have never heard of these guys, not as insiders, but they are two independent sources. And both are saying that the Jays had signed Springer. And that's got the rest of the baseball world going crazy. Right. Nuts. Right. Somebody in the know leaked the news to Kuhn while he was getting his hair cut. And that same person or a representative may have called or texted their buddy Joey Vendetta Joey, I got a scoop for you. Right. You want now, a scoop? I'll give me some front row tickets to see you too next time. In the whatever right it town. is, but it's this. It's Joey, I got a scoop for you. And we're close to signing Brantley too, but don't see, he can't say anything yet. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you this. Okay. You got Springer, mm -hmm. close to signing Brantley. Can't say anything about that. Got it? Okay, good. So now Joey tweets it out too. Now, no reporter is going to give up their source. I get that. Okay. I'm the same way. But anyway, the Jays now, they confirm the story later in the evening. Right. That's where the reporters got it. Mm -hmm. The rest of the reporters got it from the Jays. Right. Is it true? And the Jays, yeah, it's true. Right. So they're, I mean, the Jays confirmed the story. The rest of baseball media caught holding their collective you-know-whats. <laughs> like just holding them there. Right. And everyone going, who the hell are these? Who's Brandon Cuda, Joey Vendetta? Right. But that's not the half of it. So Springer is signed. The It's all that. The media gets beat on it. and and. If I'm the editor, if I'm the news director or whatever, I am livid. Mike, I'm livid. How do all you big-time reporters get scooped by a couple of amateurs? I, I'm livid. Okay? It's what are we paying you for? What, why are we paying all the Sportsnet people who cover the Blue Jays? Should they not have had this story first? And in fact, Vendetta has a show on Saturdays on The Fan. So where are his allegiances? Where do his loyalties lie? Why would he not have said, hey, I've got an excellent source. I've got a, 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 an impeccable source that tells me that the Jays have just signed George Springer. He's, however he's connected, you guys don't have this source. So I'm going to give this to you because you're the Blue Jays station because you're Rogers and I work with you guys. Uh, there's no allegiance there, man. They probably pay him a hundred bucks an hour there. Listen, I would say, I would say the, the big shocking that we always talked about. Okay. Now the same, the same uh, company that owns this baseball team employs these reporters we're talking about. So we always kind of assume there should, there might be some kind of internal be? leakage. You'd think so. So it is interesting that you can't, break a story on the team that's owned by your, the same company. It's just very interesting that it doesn't come. It never gets broken well, by the Rogers the problem, guys. Of course, this is the problem. It's, the problem it'll be, is, it'll be broken by an American uh, reporter before it's broken by, uh, you know, one of our guys. Right. Here, here's why. Another reason why. But this is very important too. Um, all the people I just mentioned that work for Sportsnet and cover the Blue Jays, um, they don't have carte blanche when it comes to covering the Jays. Mm. they have to work as well quite hard to get other contacts. They can't depend on Mark Shapiro or Ross Atkins or some insider in the Jays, whatever, to give them any information, mm. right? Because it's not going to work that way. They've got to do their own work. And so these other reporters that aren't connected to a certain team, national reporters, the Ken Rosenthal's and such, they've got contacts everywhere. Right. They got agents, they got players, they got family members. They got clubhouse attendance. They got all that, eyes and ears. The Jays reporters pretty much only have that within the Jays organization. And even there, it's limited. So that you're right. The chances of a Jays reporter breaking a story like that, if it happens, they must have gotten the information from the Blue Jays, right? Right. Right. They must have. <laughs> and since these reporters got nothing from the Blue Jays, whether they were out scooping around, whether they were nosing around trying to find or have other sources. I don't, and again, I don't know how well sourced they are outside of the Blue Jay organization. And the other thing is, what if they got a scoop from someone outside the organization? Would they have to call the Jays and say, by the way, I've got the story, I'm going to run with it. But I was told that the Jays have signed Springer for $150 million. And what if the Jays say, oh, no, it's not true? 
like they did the next day. Anyway, I got to get to this. So, Interesting. So the Jays get Springer. The media gets burned. A couple of nobodies, blah, blah, blah. The next day, the reporters are scrambling again. Why? Okay. <laughs> so now we've got Springer. We yep. know this. We've got Springer. This was Tuesday night. We know we've got him, right? Right. right. Wednesday morning, 11.35 a.m., tweet by Joey Vendetta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brantley was done last night. Wow. 11.35 in the morning the next day, Brantley was done last night. <laughs> so when I saw that, I figured, hey, if Joey had the Springer scoop, maybe Brantley was part of it. Sure. I mean, if he had, if he had Springer and they said to him, we got Brantley too, but you can't say anything. Makes sense, right? Makes sense. So, so suppose one of the Blue Jay reporters, especially what had happened the night before, had started following Joey Vendetta mm -hmm. to see because right. he had gotten the scoop the night before. Right. And suppose Hazel May, let's just suppose, saw mm -hmm. this tweet from Joey Vendetta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brantley was done last night. Okay? Yep. And she makes a call or does it? Mm -hmm. And tweets out at 1151. Michael Brantley in agreement on a three-year deal with Blue Jays per source. Wow. That's the tweet. Right. Now, if she had the time and she was a reporter and she had time to craft this story, she would have called a couple of other sources. She would have called some people for comment. Hey, what do you think if we get Michael Brantley? And she would have developed a story. Right. With this scoop. Right. But she's under time constraints because other reporters are also following Twitter. And they're checking out Joey and Brandon Kuhn to see what else they might know. Right. And this Brantley deal. So Hazel tweets this out at 1151. At 1157, Ken Rosenthal. Source confirms free agent Michael Brantley in agreement with Blue Jays on a three-year contract pending physical. Wow. First reported by at Hazel, the Hazel May. Right. So now... I see this, and this, by the way, gets uh, 5,800 5, likes, 978 retweets, uh, 1.1 thousand uh, quote tweets. I mean, this is blowing up. Right. And so that's at 11.57. So she's now quoted Hazel as being the first source, and, and it appears that he has another source that confirms this. Hmm. Or was this just Hazel? Or was it the same source that Hazel got it from? Or is it all coming from Joey Vendetta? Or is it all coming from Joey Vendetta? Wow. You can't, it can, no, no, Ken Rosenthal would not be calling Joey Vendetta. <laughs> no, but... Unless he said, who's your source? But, but Hazel anyway, has some integrity for being such a long-time Sportsnet well, uh, reporter. But that's just it. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. Is, is she considered to be a reporter? Well, that tweet, in, I mean... In the sense, a reporter, in the sense of she, she, she digs out stories... And reports on them. Now, I'm not saying that she hasn't announced before anyone else on Twitter, uh, hey, the Blue Jays have made this transaction or made that transaction. But I'm talking about being a baseball insider to the point where you have information now, mm -hmm. okay? And, and I didn't see Shai Davidi or Ben Nicholson-Smith or Arden Zwelling or any of the other Blue Jay insiders or mm -hmm. they know Blair. Jeff Blair knows his stuff. Jeff's a reporter. Right. So I didn't see any of them jumping on with this. They were the ones who said, as reported by Hazel May. So she must add an independent source. Anyway, after Rosenthal tweets this, at 1.16 p.m., Hazel May tweets this. Blue Jay official refutes my earlier tweet on source re three-year deal. Quote, the team remains interested in Michael Brantley, but there is no deal currently in place. Right. So here's my question, Mike. Did Ken Rosenthal use Hazel as his primary source and then confirmed it with the same person that gave it to Hazel in the first place? He may think it's a different source. He doesn't know who her source is. He goes and gets another source. He thinks it's another source. Maybe it's the same person. It's the same, and that person goes, oh, yeah. What's that He's feeling like? Have you ever had this feeling? Maybe you've done this, but have you ever had that feeling, the feeling after you break a story and then you start to realize it might not be true? Like, what is that like? Because it's a very public statement, done I've deal. I've never done it. I've never done it because my rule of journalism, always, and I got burned a long time ago, not in the Twitterverse. I got burned a long time ago by trying, by, by trying to portray something that was not true. And had it came back on me, I was I was working in radio. Uh, we had a protest against the Toronto Maple Leafs. They were so bad. Um, one of the guys in our group, I didn't know who he was. 
uh, burned tickets in front of Maple Leaf Gardens. The TV cameras were there. The photographers were all there. And he lit, he had like a fistful of tickets, like 10 or 12 tickets, eight or 10 tickets. And you know what the tickets looked like at Maple Leaf Gardens. They had the Maple Leaf on them. They, you know what they looked like, blues, yeah. greens, reds, golds. Yeah. And, and he lit them on fire. He, he, he grabbed the Zippo lighter and he torched them. And peop, the cameras are rolling and we're going, yeah, you know, this is what we think of the Leafs. And then, and then what happened was Alan Abel of the Globe and Mail did a story a couple of days later where he had picked up the charred tickets. They were Toronto Marley tickets, uh, which looked exactly the same as Leafs. And I didn't know right. they were. I didn't know they were. Right. But since it was my protest and I was the radio guy and I was the guy, I was the one who came out looking bad. That, right. that we had put That we had set this up and we had pretended we were doing Leaf tickets, but they were really Marley tickets uh. and I got caught. And so I learned my lesson. Lesson was, you know, uh, if someone's associated with you, you better know what's going on. You, it's your responsibility. They're part of your group. Yeah, your ass is and, on the um, line. You know, you got to pay the piper. And oh. so my, my concern there was is that after that was that, and my boss has suspended me, by the way, okay. that, that my credibility was hurt. Right. The station's credibility was shot. People weren't going to believe what Mark Hepscher was saying now because he's trying to pull one over on us. Right. And luckily, it blew over, luckily. And that, you know, I did enough good work, I guess, after that, that people, you know, forgot about it. But yeah, I got, uh, you know, and I didn't get burned by a source, but that was my own responsibility. Well, I'll I should bet. know better. And Alan Abel said, right. yeah, so, so much for Mark Hepsher and his protest here because they didn't, it wasn't, you know, he led us to believe they were leaf tickets, right. that they were Marley tickets. So right. they weren't, they weren't $50 tickets. They were $5. You, you, they were probably freebies. You learned a valuable lesson there. Uh, I bet yeah. you Hazel May, after she sends this tweet, which is very confident, you know, done deal, pending physical, three-year deal, whatever. I'll bet you as she starts to realize this might not be true, that she's shitting. I know she deleted that tweet. Like, you can't find the tweet now. She deleted it. But I bet you well, she I was, have the tweet. I have it. Yeah, well, screen cap. Yeah, of course. People screen cap the, the shit. The point is this. That's the other thing. But is, she must have been shitting bricks. Tweet, if you delete the tweet, and then you don't apologize. Like, hey, right. yeah, 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 right. I believe right. she's, I believe she's been suspended. Oh, is that from Twitter? Do you have a good source on that? I feel like we're breaking news here. I haven't oh. from Twitter. No, really? No, no. She hasn't tweeted anything. Uh, she's, she's not tweeted nothing. Yeah, but that's her. That day. She's, I bet uh, you her boss has said, oh. get off Twitter and delete that tweet. I don't know. That's, uh, I'll I don't bet know. you her boss has said, Hazel, not good. Get off Twitter. It isn't good. Don't engage. Delete that tweet. Wow. She's doing mornings this week on the fan. She's been filling in on mornings. Uh, oh, I didn't the fan know that. This week. Uh, but not nothing. So I think I think after that, she went, oh my God. Yeah. Lay low. that one up. But did, but never apologized. Nor did Sportsnet. Ken Rosenthal apologized. Anyway, let me go on here. Yeah. So, so, so now who's this source? Were the agents for Michael Brantley who wanted Houston, did they want Houston to think that he was going to sign with Toronto? And then they would come in with a last second offer. So mm. if the agent planted this story and then the Astros saw from Hazel May and Ken Rosenthal that the Jays were, gonna, were signing, were in the midst pending a physical of signing Michael Brantley and Houston saw this, would they go, and this is good for Brantley's agents who happen to be Springer's agents, would they go, okay, no, 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 we're not going to let Brantley go. We're going to offer him $16 million a year. Is it possible that an agent could do that? Of course it's possible to raise the value of your player. Absolutely. So then Ken Rosenthal, seven minutes later at 1.23 p.m., now tweets, now hearing, same as Jeff Passan, who did not report on this, just said that, you know, he just went and did his due diligence. He didn't tweet anything. He made sure he had the story right. <clears throat> now hearing the same as Jeff Passan, no agreement yet between Blue Jays and Brantley. Two sides remain in discussions apologies for being among those who reported the deal prematurely. Okay. You screwed up. You apologize. Right. Hazel didn't apologize. Mm. No apologies. No tweets, nothing. And then, and then uh, Dave O'Brien of the athletic <clears throat> responding to Rosenthal tweets at 1 25 PM, two minutes later was told they had agreed to terms late last night. Apparently, we're still details to work out. So Dave O'Brien and Joey Vendetta <clears throat> together were like, oh, yeah, we knew about this last night. Dave O'Brien of The Athletic. And by the way, The Athletic, terrible reporting, terrible, and no local reporting at all because John Lott doesn't work for The Athletic anymore. Right. And, and Andrew Stoughton doesn't work for The Athletic anymore. Right. So just terrible local reporting. Terrible. 
on your team, on your baseball team, on Canada's baseball team. Terrible. <clears throat> but hang on, I'm not done yet. Okay. So now Dave O'Brien, oh, I was told last night. Then Buster Olney of ESPN at 4 p.m. The Jays have been incredibly aggressive and have more to do. They did not even come close to signing Michael Brantley. So how do you get from they've signed him to they were close to signing him to they weren't even close to signing Michael Brantley? And then finally, responding to Buster Olney, a fellow named Jonathan Scher, quote, Brantley and Springer both represented by Excel Sports Management. Since the Blue Jays quickly refuted the claim that they had signed Brantley, I wonder if Excel planted the signing story with a Jays beat reporter to push the Astros to firm up its deal. Hmm. Hmm. Well, so there you go. So the Blue Jays have George Springer. We should be rejoicing. Right. Sportsnet should get a slap on the wrist. <laughs> Hazel May, I don't know if she's been suspended or she's decided on her own, but the point is, is that she's not going on Twitter because – and by the way, a lot of love for Hazel May on Twitter. Sure. Like, oh, no. What do you mean, sure? Uh, no, oh, what Hazel, do you mean? Like, we, in we general? Great and all that. It's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hazel May reported last year that uh, the Jays were going to be playing their home games in Pittsburgh. Hmm. I remember that. So you get a pass. I get that. You get the odd pass, but no, I'm sorry. But you think we? you think she gets uh... I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I don't dig this. You got to apologize. <laughs> okay. Right. And, 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 but you're looking, I'm looking at these tweets from people going, oh, don't worry about it, Hazel. Uh, you know, right. you know, everybody's, you know, everybody makes mistakes here. We still love you. Yeah, we love you. But I mean, next time you tweet something, are, are you, are, are people going to go, okay, is this true? <laughs> Did you get a second source or, right. And I know me, I'm going to really think twice about believing what Hazel's tweeting out with regards to a Blue Jay acquisition or something because, Last time she did, she had the story wrong. It's the opposite. That, is that wrong of me? Am I being no, a bad no, no. person? It, Am I not no. being loyal to Hazel May? No, it's nothing to do with that. Right? It's the opposite of the Steve Simmons situation where the people, because people love Hazel, she gets a lot of free passes where people generally dislike Simmons and then it's the opposite. They give him no benefit of the doubt. Like they just pounce. Mike, like, you know I what feel I mean? in all honesty, and I have to say this, that females get a much bigger break than males in cases like this. That, that more people are, and males and females, but more followers of the females seem more likely to give them, um, uh, to give the woman a second chance. A guy, no way. Nope, nope. You realize it just, this- It just appears that way to me. Yeah, yeah, because you're right. If it was a male, if it was Steve Simmons, if it was, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, if it was Shai Davidi, let's say. I'm not sure as many people would be so quick to go, oh, we still love you, Shai. That's okay. Everyone makes mistakes as much as they did with Hazel. Wow. I don't know what to say to that, except that you know this you will be, a, this will be a, a, controversial, uh, a controversial statement. I think. What I'm saying is if you want to play with the big boys and the big girls, okay, and you want to be an insider and you want to break stories, you better get it right. And that goes for anybody. You want my trust, right? You're going to write truths or you're going to write untruths. <clears throat> and if this was 20 years ago and there was no Twitter, totally different story. She would have had time to call another source, craft the story, get reaction, have it printed in a newspaper or, or even on the website, which people don't do anymore. Who does that now? You know, who's got time to write it on the website? All I have to do to craft a story is come up with someone's tweet, someone's responses to that tweet, my comments, and then wrap it up with another tweet and there it is. It's posted. It's done. There's a thread. What do you need? What do you need me to write a story for sportsnet.ca for? Here's your thread. Here's your story. All right. I'm done with that. Interesting to see how the Toronto Maple Leafs bounce back against Edmonton. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tonight at the Scotiabank Arena in front of, I don't know, how many people watch that game? How many people are in the building watching besides the players? I would guess about 50 to 100 people would be my guess. Really that many? Well, I don't know. I know David Alter has been going to games. That's all okay, I know. Okay, so <laughs> reporters. So what do you figure, 30 reporters? Yeah. <clears throat> maybe less, actually. Probably very few choose. Because I don't think you Include have to radio go. radio and TV? 30 yeah, maybe I'm high. I was thinking of like trainers and I don't know. I, maybe it's less. Oh, you're right. Okay, okay. Anyway, whoever they are, they're going to be watching Leafs Edmonton again tonight. 
Uh, an awful performance Wednesday by the Leafs. Saw the Oilers win 3-1, to one, but Mike, it's becoming obvious that Sheldon Keefe still hasn't found the right combination of forwards. And now he's got some more work to do because Joe Thornton uh, left Wednesday's game with an upper body injury after playing on the top line with Matthews and Marner, and they look pretty good. Uh, Matthews left practice early yesterday. We don't know the reason. I doubt the Leafs will tell us. And no one has tweeted anything about Matthews. They're afraid, right? You're like, what if we see him limping? What if we say he was limping? And what if he starts tonight? <clears throat> People have now, <clears throat> excuse me, backed off. They've backed off a bit in reporting because you don't want to get burned. Right. You don't want to speculate and say, uh, we saw him limping. He was on crutches. He seems fine. He's good to go. And if the coach won't tell you anything more than it's an upper body injury, he's going for an MRI, how much reporting can you do? Plus, you're like, it's like they're in a bubble. No, they're not in a bubble, but you, as a reporter, there's nothing you can do nowadays. You can't even see someone in person. It's a Zoom call. It's crazy. Right. Anyway, um, the Leafs have scored just 15, games in their, 15 goals in their five games, good enough for 12th in the NHL. They've allowed 15 as well, which puts them 15th in the league. Their power play is ranked 16th. Their penalty kill is 16th. <clears throat> not good enough for a team that should win the Canadian division. And after tonight... The Leafs head to Calgary for a 4 p.m. game with the uh, Flames on Sunday. 4 p.m. Eastern time, right smack dab in the middle of the NFL playoff games. So there'll be some channel flipping going on there, right? Brady, Rogers, uh, Matthews, Marner, Hyman, wow. McDavid. Who are you picking? Um, and by the way, after uh, Calgary, there, so Calgary 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, and then, and then they play Calgary again in Calgary on Tuesday night. And then they go to Edmonton for games Thursday and Saturday. So we're going to be sick of Edmonton. Soon we'll be sick of all these Canadian teams, I think, at some point. <laughs> we'll be like, give us some variety. Well, no, it's going to be like, you know, it's like my, when you go to an all-inclusive and the food's great, and then after the fifth day, it's the same food. <laughs> It's the same. It was great when you said, oh boy, McDavid. And then it's, oh, freaking McDavid again. <laughs> Not quite like that, but you know what I mean. You're going to get right. sick of them. Right. Uh, Florida and Carolina, uh, scheduled to play tonight, will not play, COVID-19. Um, and they're supposed to play Sunday. That game also has been postponed. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, and the Dallas Stars play their first NHL game tonight. Oh, right. Yeah, the I Leafs, didn't notice. The Leafs are playing their sixth. <laughs> Dallas plays their first. Wow. We had sort of forgotten about their COVID issues. Washington Capitals have some issues as well. Apparently, Alexander Ovechkin and all the Russian players think that they have the antibody, <laughs> that they all hung out together. Oh, it's all the Russian guys. They all hung out together. They all on the bench together. They're all breathing hard on each other together. But they all hang out together. Right. And they're the Russians. So Ovechkin's wife tweets something out or puts something on Instagram basically saying, oh, no, no, you can't catch it from your teammates that have all, you know, been together and isolated as, as Russians have all been together. You can't get it from the, she's like, I'm going, what the hell? What are you thinking, lady? Nuts. <sighs> so Washington may have some issues as well. Those guys have been quarantined. I don't know when their next game is, but, uh, but it's like, you know, the NHL and the NBA, more the NBA actually is like, okay, these games have been postponed. We've got to reschedule these games. And like I said before, I'm sorry, man, if you can't feel the team, and it's not even fair. For the NBA, like fielding a team with eight guys, seven guys. I mean, you're getting, are you really getting the best out of, are we really seeing the best basketball? Should the NBA really not just kind of go, okay, guys, we're stopping the season. Everybody's going into a bubble. And then we're going to play the next 20 games in a bubble. Because they, the NBA hasn't even released their second half schedule yet. Right. They haven't released it yet because they don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know how many games they're going to have to reschedule. How many more are going to be affected by COVID? Um, and the Raptors luckily have escaped the COVID problems for now. They're still not playing well, but it's not because of lack of players or sick players. It's just they're not that good. They're 13th in the East. They're 5-9, and nine, and they get another game with the Miami Heat tonight in uh, Tampa. On Wednesday, the Raps led the Heat at halftime, but choked and gagged in the second half and lost by nine. Is that a familiar theme to you? <laughs> right. <laughs> and the big boys have got to step it up if the Raptors are going to have any hope of going on a winning streak. And Nick Nurse has got to find an answer in the middle. Aaron Baines is not the answer. Chris Boucher is not the answer. He is for 20 minutes a game, but he's not durable enough to take the pounding necessary to play the five. Remember, he used to have Gasol and Ibaka, horses in there. Right. Not anymore. 
you got those were Clydesdales. These you got you know you got like Shetland ponies in there now. <laughs> right. bad, bad example. Raptors uh, go to Indianapolis for a matinee Sunday after the uh, Heat game tonight. Then they play the Pacers again Monday night before returning home to Tampa to host the Milwaukee Bucks Wednesday and the Sacramento Kings next Friday. They're going to be in a battle all season long. NFL playoffs: Ooh. Brady versus Rodgers. Green Bay favored by three and a half. I'm going to take the Packers. Is that because of weather? Is that because it's in uh, Green Bay and it could be a cold, snowy day? Well, I'm not. You know, I'm not saying that. Like, you know, Brady doesn't know how to play in bad weather. I think sure, there's more to it than that. I think. I think the. I think Tampa got kind of lucky last week. Drew Brees just could not yeah. throw the ball downfield. He just kept turning the ball over. He could not throw the ball downfield, and I think that. Uh, I think Tampa's gonna. It's a much different environment, and a. Um, it'll be a much tougher battle playing in Green Bay um, um, for the NFC Championship game. So I'm going to take the Packers in this one. That's quite the and game, of though. course, what's that? Like, that's quite the draw. Like, I think the, uh, the the very casual football fans will be glued to that one, I think, to see if Brady can get back to another Super Bowl. Like, that's an unbelievable story. Can he it get is. to Rod, another Rod, Rod, Rodgers Super Bowl? Rodgers, too. Oh, yeah, Aaron yeah, that's Rodgers true, because he's only won the one, right? He only won the one title, Rodgers, right? That's right, but still, hell of a quarterback. Hell of a player. Oh, yeah. yeah it oh, yeah. should be a good one. And then, uh, and then the big one for uh, for us anyway is the Bills against the Kansas City Chiefs in KC. The Chiefs beat the Bills in Week Six. Since then, Buffalo has gone eleven and one. Wow! And they are looking for revenge. The Chiefs expect Patrick Mahomes to be near a hundred percent. He suffered a concussion in last week's win over Cleveland. He's been practicing all week long, Mike. And if he's anywhere near as effective as he has been all season, the Chiefs will win this game. As good as Josh Allen is. I think Patrick Mahomes at 100% is going to cause fits for the Buffalo defense. Having said that, I'm going to take Buffalo and the three points in this oh. one. Last second field goal. I, I hope it's a great game, but I would love to see Buffalo get to the Super Bowl again. Bills and Packers for the Super Bowl. Wow. And finally, the Canadian Olympic Committee has confidence that the 2020, 2021, Tokyo Olympic Games will be staged safely and successfully given what has been learned in sport over the last several months and the emphasis the IOC and Tokyo 2020 Organizing Committee have placed on COVID-19 countermeasures. That from David Shoemaker, head of the Canadian Olympic Committee. This was last night. This is right. when everyone else is saying, shut it down. 80% of Japanese don't think it's going to, don't want it to happen. Shut it down. And, and they haven't made an official announcement, but everyone's saying, you know, it's not going to happen. And here's the Canadian Olympic Committee saying, we continue in our preparation to participate at Tokyo 2020 with a focus on the health and safety of our athletes, their families, and their communities. What a bunch of bull. Well, what do you think is going to happen there? I think they're going to cancel it. I think the sooner the better. You can't even think of having, first of all, even if you were to have no fans in the stands. Mm -hmm. You're still dealing with thousands of, of athletes and trainers, aren't you? And there's no way, I guess, this is too large a, too large a group to bubble up, I guess, like they do for like they did for the NBA playoffs, for example. Well, I'm saying even if they bubble up, that means you're going to perf be performing in front of no people. Isn't part of the Olympics? Well, it's a Look, television it. event, I mean, right? Under it's... certain circumstances, but I mean, I guess you know, I'm... what yeah. a year later we're that much better off in the world than we were a year ago that we can allow all these people to fly internationally. Be, be quarantined, mm -hmm. be tested regularly, not have fans there, not have any uh, contact with anyone outside of your of level one or whatever le the athlete's level is. Uh, tell me, Olympic boxing? No, I can't have Olympic boxing to be sweating and snotting all over each other. So yeah, right? but, yeah but if they bubble Come up, on, okay, Mike, I, you can't do it. Okay. You can't do it. Selfishly, I really just it. want to see Andre de Grasse so take, you can't do take it. the reins there. <laughs> You, you absolutely cannot. If you were to, if you asked all the athletes now, would you like to go to the Olympics? They would all say the same thing. If everyone has been vaccinated, if all the measures were in place, if everyone had been vaccinated at that time, then I would get on a plane, fly there with my team, quarantine for 14 days or whatever, play in front of nobody. It still wouldn't be the same. All right. But having said that, if I'm an athlete and I may never get another chance, What's the risk? Look, um, Milos Raonic didn't go to the Olympics in Rio because of Zika virus. Right. Right. The Zika virus. Now, you're telling me that these athletes here, 
Some of them are going to go, wait a second, let me, let, me, let me measure this out. Only this many people are dying. We're going to be in a bubble. We're not going to be performing in front of anyone, but they, get, but they will be televised. For sure. Still, man, that's a real long shot. But Hebsey, man, what if, there's a, what if there's a possibility that these athletes could be inoculated before these games? Like we're talking now, because I mean, we're hoping, not, I don't know if we'll be on track, but we're hoping that you get a shot in your arm by the end of the summer. So possibly there's a way to, to actually vaccinate the athletes uh, and just don't allow, don't allow crowd, but make it a television event. I think it would be big. No, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't think the Tokyo organizing committee could go on without fans being there because think of not, it's not just fans in the stands at the events. It's people there everywhere, spending their money, hotels, attractions, I mean, merchandise. I have no idea what the projections were had there not been uh, the coronavirus, of the amount of money <clears throat> that would come in, mm -hmm. amount of money it costs to stage the games, and then, of course, to stage those games, you've got to have money coming in to pay for that. Unless you have to, you're going to wait until 2032, which is the next available Olympics that are available, that, that there is no site that has been determined. <clears throat> and even now, if the IOC said, okay, it's not going to happen, you got them for 2032. Now that's, that's 11 years away. Is there any way right? to move it to 2022? Uh, yeah, 2022. No, 2022. Well, no, you've got the no, you've got the Winter Olympics you in can't, 2022. Because we used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> in February, and there's right. no guarantee that uh, 13 months from now, everything's going to be hunky-dory in Beijing for the Winter Olympics. Mm. Uh, right. and, and as it were, it was going to be a pretty quick turnaround from July of 2021 to February of 2022. <clears throat> so, Whew. any Lots. more questions, Doctor? <laughs> I just hope they, 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 I just really want to enjoy some uh, Summer Olympics. Uh, so I'm very selfish here, but you're right. I, I don't know. I think they could do it without a crowd, but I guess time will tell. I'm sure they can. I'm sure they could, but will they? <laughs> and I tell you, I would not like to be on the organizing committee. I would not like to be on the IOC right now. Um, I said the same thing when, when the virus hit. I would not like to be an owner or uh, of a professional team, um, NBA, English soccer, NHL, doesn't matter. You're looking at massive, massive losses. It's, it's quite something. Wow. Well, that's it for episode 216 of Hebsey on Sports. I uh, hope you enjoyed it today. On uh, We're live on Facebook. We're live on Okay, YouTube. so to, to run this down for the podcast, because most people are listening to Hebsey on Sports as a podcast, but to let, let the podcast listeners know, we're actually going live these days. We go live on Hebsey Man's YouTube page, and it will live there forever. But we also went live on your uh, Facebook page. So both places had a live stream where you could see our beautiful faces. And, of course, this audio is forever in the podcatcher of your choice. Right. Please subscribe. Subscribe to the podcast. Uh, go to HebsyOnSports.com or, I mean, wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm going to be posting other things besides just the Hebsy on Sports uh, podcast, vodcast. Other neat stuff there. So check that out. It would be lovely. And uh, thanks, as always, to Toronto Mike for production, inspiration. And let me tell you, during the course of the week when we're doing testing and stuff like that, it's like, does this work? Does that work? Is that going to work for Friday? Is everything going to be okay? <laughs> so, Mike, thanks for that. And uh, right. check him out at Toronto Mike. He's got Pandemic Fridays with Stu Stone and Cam Gordon. Always a great show and uh, always great guests on the Toronto Mike podcast. And uh, we'll talk to you again next Friday. Thanks for allowing us into your headspace. Um, and uh, until next Friday, thanks so much for listening. Really appreciate it. And uh, so long for now. This podcast has been produced by TMDS and accelerated by Rome Phone. Rome Phone brings you the most reliable virtual phone service to run your business and protect your home number from unwanted calls. Visit romephone.ca to get started. And let me press the magic button in stage 10 here. Goodbye, everybody.